Okay, y'all. I'm about to do the rest of my makeup and I'm going to film it for a natural tutorial. So I didn't want to repeat myself over the last couple of Instagram videos that I've done on IGTV. So please watch those for what I have on my face so far. So I do have on light tinted primer. I have on creme beige photo filter. I have nude bisque concealer. I have toasted coconut powder, golden contour bronzer, velvet rose highlighter, which is limited and it's in the sales section. There's only a few left. And I filled in my eyebrows with medium brown and dusty brown. So that's what I have so far, what I'm starting this video with. So, like I said, I'll put that in the um, product description. So, or not the video description. Um, and I think you can read that by clicking some button on the upper right-hand side of the IGTV. And it will do like a little drop down of video description and all the colors will be there. Okay, so now that I have all the basics on, I am going to pin my hair back and we are going to talk about natural makeup application. Okay, so Sean and I are going to go do some shopping today. And so I don't want to look, you know, lady man from Thailand and have a lot of makeup on. So we're just going to show you two simple colors that you can do. If you're not good at applying eyeshadow or eyeshadow intimidates you, you will love this tutorial. So let me start with my lips. So, so far I've canvassed my lips, meaning I just put foundation and concealer over them. Now I'm going to do Holly Berry Lip Liner. It's hard to talk. Just like you girls when I'm trying to do your makeup, want to tell me your life story when I'm doing your eyeliner. Don't talk when your makeup artist is doing your lips. Our waterproof gel liners glide on super smooth. They stay on forever. Holly Berry is a real neutral color. See how hard it is to talk? that I use to kind of fill in my entire lip on days that I want something that's sheer but long wearing. Then I can put my lip dew on top. So Japanese Magnolia, which after pulling our report today, I see is our 12th best selling item in the entire line of cosmetics. It's a hydrating lip balm with vitamin C, aloe, avocado oil, shea butter, and just gives you little hints of color. Looks really great with Holly Berry. Uh, I'm not going to put any blush on. I'm not a big blush person um, since I have rosacea, so I just skip it. But I have golden contour and I have velvet rose highlighter here. I already have my brows drawn on, um, like I said, with medium brown and dusty brown brow wigs. And then now I am going to take my concealer brush, which is this guy right here. It's called Brow Lift Concealer Brush, and I'm going to apply my brow lift. Brow lift is our fifth best-selling item in the whole line. And it is awesome because it creates a really pretty lifted Botox look. So I do Dysport, which is the same as Botox, different brand. Um, and this, and the combination of the two is how I get that really pretty lifted look to my eye. So I'm gonna do this. Do not judge my fingernails. That's actually one of the things I'm on to do list. So before you bitchy, judgy bitches start inboxing me like granny and nails, I'm working on it, okay? That's what we do on Sundays and it's Sunday morning. So anyway, Put a little of that on, and do you see how it just kind of like opens up my eye? Let me get a little bit more of this. This is a creamy product, so for those of you who order online and say, I didn't realize it was creamy, you sent me the wrong thing. Not the wrong thing, it's creamy, okay? Don't put it all the way across the underside of your brow because it'll lift the whole thing, which will flatten the brow. You're trying to create an illusion of light and bright over here. Then I'm gonna take my finger, tap it in, make it look like skin. Now I'm gonna do eye base. So eye base is the same formula as brow lift, different color. These are oil-free products that you can spread all the way across your lid to create kind of a canvas. And since the colors are a little bit different, this one is more to like neutralize veins and redness on the eyelid, where brow lift is a little bit brighter than our skin tone and adds more of like an openness and lifted look. If you do brow lift all the way across your lid, unless you're super, 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 super white, it's gonna make your eye look flat. So I recommend to use the darker one, which is called Eye Base Natural downstairs, and then brow lift upstairs. Okay, now that's done. And just a little pro tip, do not put any moisturizer on your eyelid during the day when you're doing makeup. If you put an oil barrier here, either it's concealer, foundation, primer, whatever you do on your eyelid before applying your eye base, you're gonna have creasing issues. 
okay? If you say, but my eye base creases anyway, you're probably putting something before that or just using way too much. Cut the amount in half if you're not putting anything on your eyelid first. And if it's still too greasy for you, then set it with mattifying oil blot powder or just buy another brand, I don't care. I'm just telling you. Okay, so I just dropped this on the floor right before the video, but here is my brand new eyeshadow. It's called What the Shell with Beaches and Cream. So like I said, I'm teaching you a very, very simple eye tutorial with these two colors. And I'll take a better picture later because it's hard to see. Or you can go to the website and look. Um, and I'm going to put Wet the Shell on my large shadow brush and tap it onto my eyelid. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap all the way across the lid. Not in my crease, just right up to the underside of my brow bone. Look at that. See, so I just gave my lid a really pretty little pop. This color is between white sands and shorelines if you have those two colors and this is a little bit too bright for you or if your skin is a lot darker than mine then just do shorelines but what the shell is really really pretty i like white sands for a really fair skin tone now i'm going to switch over to my blending shadow brush this is not the replacement for desert rose but it's really close to desert rose for those of you guys who keep asking there is not a color per color match in desert rose i'm so sorry that manufacturer quit making eyeshadows so i did the best that i can so maybe later but not for now beaches and cream is just one shade lighter again it's hard to tell on this video but it is just a little bit lighter and a little bit more peachy pretend gingerly peach and desert rose had a baby and that's beaches and cream but i've really been loving it for my matte crease color. So if you guys follow or you've been in for a makeover, you know we do not put shimmer in the crease of our eye. When you do that, it brings out wrinkles and you're confusing the shadow. So always put your matte color here. And for the JK users and lovers out there, do I put anything over the brow lift? No, we don't. We don't put anything over the brow lift. The brow lift just stands alone. I used to use MAC rice paper or nylon, which is shimmery as shit. And I used to put that right underneath my eyebrow instead of brow left. And guess what? In every photo, it'll get an orb on my eye. So please do not do that. Just follow the law of color, shimmer highlight versus contour, and shimmer is gonna bring things forward. You don't wanna bring the baggy extra skin in your crease forward, okay? Most of us aren't 12. Most of us have wrinkles right there. So we want to conceal it and push it back. I often get asked, well, will you do a tutorial for girls with hooded eyelids? I have hooded eyelids. Botox corrects a little, well, Dysport corrects a little bit of it, um, but for the most part, using something like this will work for you the same way um, as if you have really, really hooded eyelids. So one option is to cut them off and get a buffer plastic. The other option is to use a color like that in the crease, matte and neutral. Now I'm going to use an angled eyeliner brush, get a little bit of water I put over here on the side, and I'm going to use my pitch black liner. So who's pitch black for? Pretty much all brunettes or anyone with brown eyes, I would recommend um, using the black. If you're blonde, lighter eyes, and you want a really natural makeover, use the espresso brown. So when I put this liner on, I get really close to the lash line. I like the art liner brush better than the watercolor liner, but we have options of a flat or an angled one. And you just get right into the lash line. So the technique of tight lining is taking more of your product, making sure there's not too, too much water on it and going underneath. So I'm going to get real close, use the mirror behind my camera here. Hope I don't have any boogers in my nose. And if I do, I'm sorry. Pressing and wiggling right into the root of the lash, making the lash line look twice as thick, but not looking like you have a Sharpie across your eye. You see, I'm not trying to draw a line and I'm hiding all that pink skin between each hair. Love it, love it, love it. Once you start doing this, you'll throw away your pencils. I get people who ask, why don't you sell pencils? Well, that's why I don't like pencils because you can't get into the root. So again, I'm gonna spread this all the way across the lid, or not spread this, swipe this, but in little bitty motions, tap, tap, tap. Get some more water on my brush. If you get too much water, you're gonna get it into your eyeball and you're gonna say, that shit sucks because it's all up in my eyeball. You have too much water on it. So you just wanna get it more like a shoe polish paste and texture. I'm gonna show you in one second because that's a complaint I get on my videos is I forget to show y'all on my hand, which is where I recommend you test it until you learn the amount to use. Here we go, got my eyeliner on. Okay, so here's the, here's the palette, here's my hand. That's what the texture should look like. Y'all see that? Looks like a little heart. I don't even do that on purpose. Here is what you guys do. I'm adding more watercolor to the brush. You see that? See how juicy that is? See, it's like dripping down my hand right here. That is too much water. That is gonna get into your eyeball and it's gonna sting. 
So please do not use that much water. Now I'm going to curl my lashes. Um, let's see, I'm not gonna use a Laura Mercier eyelash curler. I'm gonna use the Tweezer Man because they don't make the Laura Mercier curler anymore. And everybody keeps, keeps inboxing me asking where to get it. Well, you can't. And if you find it, please tell me. Cause I'm gonna buy one. Cause I love the Laura Mercier ones, which is this one right here. But I'm gonna use the Tweezer Man, which is my second favorite one. I do have this in my Amazon swipe ups. I'll double verify that link is still valid because it's been a while. If not, I'll add it to my story today because this curler is pretty good and it's the one that we use inside the store. Now I'm gonna use my Infinity Mascara from Gentry Kelly Cosmetics. The wand is not normally bent. I just bent it wiping it off one time and I'm just gonna left it that way because I, I like it bent just a little bit. So when you put one layer of this stuff on, it's very, very natural. If you let it dry, go back to it, then you're really gonna start getting some length. The cool thing about this mascara is it comes off in tubes. I do not even use erase eye makeup remover anymore from my own brand because I don't need it. My undressed face wash takes this stuff off in little tubes so it doesn't sludge up underneath your eyes. And it's amazing and wonderful and I love it because it's easy. Who doesn't want easy? Q-tips are your best friend. Always keep these on hand. And then that way you can clean up any excess that fell down while you were working. Uh, I don't like bottom mascara or bottom eyeliner. It brings your eyes down. So if you're a newbie around here, we do not do bottom mascara. Who wants to bring their eyes down? But I will take a little bit of my Nude Bisque Concealer. At the very end, you can use Pink Himalayan um, as well, which is one of our satin skin sticks. You could use the YSL Touche Claw if you have that. If you don't, then don't worry about it. Concealer will work. You don't need to buy a new product. See? Just kind of cleans up any drop off if you got, um, if you made a mess with your mascara um, or got eyeshadow drop off. There we go. Looking good. Since you did that, you got to go back and set it with a little bit more powder. My concealer has to be set with powder or it'll crease. Most brands that have liquid concealers need to be set with powder. I can't speak for every brand, but most brands. If you don't, it will crease. If you say, my concealer always creases, you're probably not setting with powder. So now I'm gonna go back with that last coat of mascara. Actually, no, before I do that, hold on, hold on. I have this really pretty shimmery stuff called Saturn's Rings. It's one of my loose shadows. I'm gonna dump a little bit of that on my eye. It's kind of like a metallic silver thing. I like to put just a tiny bit right there. Oh my God. What girl doesn't like a little bit of glitter? Look how pretty that is. Love it, love it. Just gives you a extra sparkle, something for Sean to be looking at today while we're having lunch together. And then one more coat of mascara. And you can see how by adding this second coat, you really start getting a lot more volume. It is a nice, rich black color as well. So it shows up really good. And wow, my bay lash is starting to kick in. That's my lash serum. Not mine, but it's a brand of lash serum that I use and we sell inside the store. It's on the website too. I'll put a link to it, but um, make sure eyelashes grow, but without a lot of side effects of the um, redness of the skin and stuff. So, Okay, well, that's it. That is the natural tutorial. Looking pretty good. Not too bad. Take my hair down. It's like I'm a whole new woman over here. There you go, and I will put a uh, before and after on my wall. Thanks for watching.